Pretty exciting day for me. After what feels like years talking about it, I'm getting to sail the Ultramare 55. And you'll probably notice behind me, not one, but two of them. And I am I think these represent really where the high end of fast blue water cruising has got to today. I mean, these are a phenomenal success story. We got to meet the owners of both boats last night. Uh, so this one here is number one, called Saga, and has been built for a family who have already sailed their Utrecht 51 around the world with their kids. They've come back, worked for another three years, and now they've yeah bought this one and they're going off again uh, for another three year circumnavigation. And then you've got another young couple from Marseille who own this which is number five. And this is the one we're gonna go and sail on this morning. And if I say to you, how many of these boats Utrema have sold already, I just don't think you'd believe me. Put it this way, if you really want one, and I would really want one, if you gave me whatever it would cost, around one and a half million euros probably, then um, yeah. I would love one, thank you very much. However, you'd still have to wait till 2025 already to take delivery. These are perhaps the most popular craft, new, new sailing boats on the market today. Let's find out why. So as you can tell, this one has had quite a lot of optional extras, including the carbon rotating mast, composite rigging, really top-notch deck gear, down to even the textile lifelines. This is a Performance 55. So here's a pretty good example of what get a Performance Cat gets you going upwind. That's the Lagoon 55 just ahead of us. We're going higher with a dagger board so we can point higher. And I'm guessing we're doing at least a knot, knot and a half quicker. Punching into some waves. Short, sharp, choppy seas, but not a bad motion and still making eight to nine knots in 15 true. Still sailing upwind at the moment. Some really comfortable positions to sail from this helm. You can swing the wheel out, right outboard to sit outboard, or to stand here, perched against the helm. Uh, and yeah, that B&G revolving pod there, really nice. I haven't tried standing inboard yet, but it's really good positions here. Just standing here, see straight over onto your head sail works really well so we're still punching into this ugly chop but averaging sort of eight to nine knots between 35 and 45 degrees of power so not bad angles really that's about 60 to 70 true just trying to keep boat speed up so I'd say we were slightly underpowered with the self tacking jib before in this sort of average 15 knots Especially when the sea state stops us, so we've now got the big Genoa out and the uh, bridle system they have for it means you can sheet it nice far inboard. So we're still sort of making 35 to 40 degrees the apparent wind angle, uh, but more, the speed is now nine and a half, ten knots going upwind, which is pretty respectable, really, isn't it? Remembering that this is a very comfortable blue water cruiser. Look at the size of the dinghy. 
So this is traditionally a pretty uncomfortable angle for a, for a catamaran, trying to punch across short, sharp seas. But it's still pretty comfortable on here. And here's what it's like in the cabin as well. Pretty quiet, really. No big scary noises so far. <laughs> but if you're choosing to spend your time going upwind, you've done your route planning a bit wrong in my book. So this is Loic's favorite position here for keeping watch. Even who's showing us last night, just having a chair there so you can be completely out of the elements and still have really good vision forward. 15 knots of wind, 15.7 knots of boat speed. So we are, yeah, it's blue water cruising gym, but not like you know it. This is um, sustained, you know, typical trade winds really from the aft quarter. We've got the A4 now and we are making a sustained 10, 11 knots and then up to sort of 15, but it's just very, very easy, comfortable, fast passage making miles. And pretty addictive here on the helm. So your sheets are obviously brought to these two powerful former winches right here by the helm. So you can manage everything from either pedal stall. Uh, but this is really neat feature as well, it's having these uh, engine throttle controls right here as well. Very, very nicely done this one. Really, very, the engineering and design thought for sailing it, uh, it is superb. And I guess that's, a lot of that comes to, from people like Loic there on the foredeck who's, um, yeah, been there and done it. And all that feedback comes back to what works, what doesn't. Um, you know, he's just been telling me about how he uses the asymmetric, he has two different asymmetrics that they use for downwind sailing and, and that that's really the way to go uh, rather than furling sails when you are doing proper trade wind sailing uh, and you can sail sort of as deep as 160 true and really still make good speeds like we were today really. Sustained high speed Offshore cruising, that's what it's all about. That's where this, having the length and beam and sheer space of a boat like this will come into its own. If you can afford it, of course. So there's a huge flat coach rooftop of the Utrem 55. You get all this solar space up there plenty more further forward as well easy to get up onto onto the roof to stack the main and then you're into the control center either side which I showed you earlier sailing with the winches and lines led here and then really good scan strap revolvable pods so depending on whether you're standing at the helm sitting outboard or seated or standing inboard uh, really good options for seeing that screen and good visibility over that foredeck which curves down past Julian there onto the head sails and then yeah let them just move around the deck thing you'll notice about this base as boats unsurprising is just how much stowage space there is and really how refined it is as well there's so much feedback gone in from while I'm wittering on here's the daggerboard casings there from previous Boutromare owners We've been around the world and done it and fed back. Um, so it's really uh, hard to, to find fault. Not that I'm trying to find fault, but there's a lot to applaud in this boat. So Stowage, yeah, massive sails lockers as you'd expect. Uh, and the same again on port to keep all your toys, your tanks, your paddle boards, your surfboards, your foils, whatever you want to take on your world around the world trip these days massive tramp area 
on the Lorimar bowsprit section. Just find these huge furling off wind sails. You can see, yeah, anchor led there, neatly contained on the tramp itself. Leading aft, there's your clutches for the tack lines and uh, steps up here onto the roof. So you've got the forward access as well. And more locker space under here, the tanks each side. And there's your track for the self tacking jib. And then same again on this side while we're out here. You can see the ventilation you get from these windows that now drop down new feature on this 55 so you get full ventilation running through that boat and that you can have that at half height all the way up or obviously fully down as well and this boat's just about to leave now Yeah, it's a great helm seats and then moving aft, you've got three steps down to the aft cockpit area. It's all standard really, having the entrance way, the swim platform and access to the engine rooms each side here. And to the steering gear itself, so um, yeah, they've gone from, from the from the quadrant, you've got rod steering that runs under the cockpit and up to those swing Jeffa pedestals there. Davits, another huge solar panel here after this got a lightweight AST, rigid tender. Fun, sporty tender to have, really good option. So this one's got the traveller controls on the aft deck itself which is an option you can have it up at the helms um, and then you're into the cockpit and a phenomenal amount of space and stowage space all stowage below here the table will drop flip over uh, and form a huge sunbed area it's also worth noting you can enclose all of this cockpit space as well you know for inclement weather and that sort of thing protect it all and yeah, I was just asking. So, this is boat belongs to Jean David and his partner Alain. And yeah, typical really. You have young sporty owners who want to sail fast. And Jean David has moved up from a pogo. Um, and the sort of profile of owner you get for a sporty, fun boat to sail these days. And you see there's a variety of options for where you sit and enjoy the space. From out here to having a sort of breakfast bar and then to the saloon itself. And it's really nice to have. Um, this island is really the central feature of the boat. Just having a breakfast bar and island galley like you would at home really. And well, in fact, this is larger than my kitchen at home. There's so much stowage space surrounding it. I'm not gonna take you through all the lockers, but when you look at the size of these fridges here, you start to get, they start to paint the picture. To have the nav station, command centre, right in the heart, in the middle of the boat. Um, again, you've got the ventilation coming through, and obviously that saloon table raises and lowers there. Natural light, obviously phenomenal. And then you can have a three or four cabin layout, essentially. So this one has two and one, basically, so three cabins, but. Um, you get an idea of the space in this. There's owner's configuration. You have the owner's hull here. That door slides to shut it off and to give access to the stowage behind it. Massive. Well, it must be a queen size double stowage all below and in the build section. But not that you need that because well, this is you've got all your all your hulls. So you've got a fantasy area here. You've got all these wardrobes, three kilo or five kilo wash dryer in there and hanging space below. Another double wardrobe here, there's your casing for the dagger board and then, yeah, not shy of space in the heads and shower. I mean, look at this shower, look at the size of this. And 
And then on the porthole, you can have yeah, two cabin layout. You can have a utility cabin forward. This one, I think, has done a really nice use of the space. Um, I really like this setup. It's like having a spare room. A utility cabin, a work, yeah, it could be a full workshop, but this, you've got an office basically. You've got room for lots of your gear and you've got two fold down bunks. So um, when kids or occasional guests come, these fold down. You've got a, a, essentially a Pullman cabin. These can be locked at a certain angle. Again, loads more stowage. And then splitting the heads and shower area. It's another really sensible idea. So generous space in each. Again, look at the size of the shower. And that still leaves another berth, same size as the one in the starboard cabin. Superb amount of natural light as well. Can anyone tell I'm a wee bit jealous of this boat? Not really too surprising that it's probably the most popular large boat in this market area really.